Hey guys, what's up? Scottish Duck here, once again, time for another collection update. Right, quite a big pile here, um, actually I haven't done a video in a while, have I? You've heard all this before, let's get into the games. Okay, uh, this one came today actually, and I was very surprised it came so soon, and I really, um, this was a big impulse buy, it was quite pricey, but you know what? I think it was worth it, and that is... Terra Nigma for the Super Nintendo. Only released in Europe. It's an RPG. And I've seen bits of this RPG before. It looks like a beautiful 16-bit game, you know? That and, of course, my love for JRPGs and stuff. I'm like, right, I gotta have this, you know? Um, I've played Illusion of Time, also known as Illusion of Gaia, before. It was by the same developer. I loved that game a lot. So I'm definitely looking forward to giving this a try. So, Yeah. Again, very pricey, very pricey indeed, but I'm glad I have it now. Okay, uh, next up we have Sorcery Saga, Curse of the Great Curry God. Mm-hmm, yeah, this is uh, published by Axis Games. It was actually being published by Rising Star Games uh, right now, but I actually bought this, it's an American copy, as you can see, I bought this just as Rising Star Games published it. I was getting impatient, I wanted to get it, soon as possible and I just caved. With that said though, I've popped in and only played it for a few minutes, but I'm very, I'm actually very disinterested in playing it. I mean, I pop it in, I play it and it's like, okay, this character, this main character, this teacher character is insane. I don't know, it was like, all the characters that I'd saw within the first like few minutes, it was like, I'd seen these characters before, it seemed kind of like typical to me. I don't know, it was a weird feeling anyway, um, uh, we'll probably give it another try, but it's definitely not high priority at the moment, so, yeah, whatever. Weird-ass name as well. Weird-ass fucking name indeed. Okay. And another JRPG, actually, is, uh, Benton Kaitos for the GameCube. Uh, I know nothing about this game, other than the fact that it's made by the same people that made Eternal Sonata, I believe. Um... No, actually, it's not. This is made by Monolith Soft, isn't it? Hold on. I I actually, this isn't the first time I've done this. I always mix up who made this game. I either think it's by the guys that made Internal Sonata, or I think it's um from the guy from Monolith Soft. I don't know. Bend and Kytos. Finally got it. Can't wait to play it. Right. Actually, let me put these away first, because I've, I should have put this at the beginning of the video, actually, because what else I got was... Um... I got a PS4, guys! I got me a PS4! Holy shit! I got Injustice, I got Knack, and I got Killzone. Shite! Shite! Good game, but it's a Game of the Year edition repackaged so you can get more money out of you. So, shite. So, yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 in all honesty, I've, um, I've not played e uh, either of these games extensively yet, but I'm not really compelled to based on what I've played so far. So, yeah. I'm very glad to have got the PS4. I'm really liking it, you know, as a console. You know, it's like how slick it is, how fast it is. Um, I'm definitely, you know, <laughs> it was either that or the, or the Xbox One. So, obviously, I was going to get the PS4. But the PS4 is good, so I'm happy. So, yay. Uh, yeah, that's PS4. Awesome. Right, next up we have, in anticipation for the third one coming out, Drakengard and Drakengard 2. Hope I'm saying that right. I actually bought these off my friend Aerodynamic, whose name I can never pronounce. <laughs> I go on about that quite a bit, haven't I? Um, I'm pretty sure I already own this one, actually. You know, it's funny. I saw, like, Drakengard 3 was coming out, so I'm like, oh, okay, i got to try out the other ones, you know, so I can pick this up. And I got it. And I'm like, wait, I already own this. It was like something I picked up randomly out of a shop one time. Never had Dragon Guard 2, mind you, and I did get a really good price for both of them, so not that fussed. Um, as for Dragon Guard 3, I hope I'm saying that right. Dragon Guard, yeah. Um, it remind me, actually, it's like it's going to be digital only in Europe, I believe, but I believe it's physical in uh, America. If that's the case, I will gladly import it. So, yeah, weird, that's such a, that's like a really sort of niche, um, well, you know, it's not really a well-known RPG series, so I think it's strange that Square chose to bring that back, but whatever, I know there's probably a lot of fans out there that were quite pleased. Right, um, 
what we got here next? Um, next is this, not still wrapped in its cellophane. Ride to Hell Retribution. Now, I've heard so many bad things about this game, you know, like, I believe it was mostly because of Angry Joe, you know, his review on it. He said that it was the worst game he'd played all year, it makes all gamers look bad, and it made him physically mad and shit. So, obviously, I ran out and bought it immediately. <laughs> Seriously. You know, it's like... You know when you hear there's a bad film, a really, really horribly bad film, obviously you go out and buy it, but with bad games, you know, people typically tend to stay away, but when the games are, like, so bad, it's like, oh, I've got to try this out, you know, it's like, okay, I'll do it. And to be fair, it's like, it's by Deep Silver. You know, they're, um, they're a decent publisher. So, I don't know, is this going to be really that bad, or is it actually going to be one of those games that's so bad it's good? Only time will tell. I don't know. Uh, either way, I'm not too quick to pop it in but we'll see you know we'll see right um four games left here and um they belong to two series that i would like to talk about first one star fox 64 3d and star fox assault guys i really became quite a star fox fan recently you know i was like thinking about star fox 64 3d and i'm thinking why don't i own that yet because I have it for the Super Nintendo, you know, where it's called Lilith Wars, holy shit. Um, but I never really played it, so I'm like, alright, I'll pick this up. And it's really, really good, you know, it's held up really well. I enjoyed it a lot. And I went on a bit of a marathon, you know, I was playing some of the Super Nintendo games, um, and I picked this up as well, Star Fox Assault. I've heard eh, things about this one. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. I don't know, I'm... I'm thinking this is just like what Super Mario Sunshine was to the Mario series, you know, a very love or hate game, so we'll see how it turns out, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be giving it a go. Uh, yeah, but Star Fox, really digging this series at the moment, you know, and more than ever, I want to fucking, like, I was definitely for it before, but now I'm really emotionally attached. I hope I'm not setting myself up for disappointment here, but I really want to see a fucking Star Fox game on Wii U now. Buy Platinum Games. I know Hideki Kamiya said he doesn't want to make it anymore, but I swear to God, Reggie, just go over there to fucking Platinum Games, get on your knees, and beg him to make a fucking game. A Star Fox game that's all over the top and hilarious like the wonderful 101 was, you know, that would be, a mo that would be amazing. You know, it really fucking would be. So, yeah. And the uh, last two games here we have, this is quite interesting to me actually, Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil Revelations. Now, Resident Evil Zero, Resident Evil Revelations, and Resident Evil Code Veronica, those, as far as I'm concerned, are like the three main series Resident Evil games that don't have a number attached to them. Which is a shame, because I think... I haven't really played this one yet, admittingly, but I loved the remake on the GameCube. That was a brilliant game. So I'm expecting more of the same from this. But yeah, these three games, they're really good. Many of you know Resident Evil Code Veronica is my favourite in the series. And this was surprisingly good. You know, I only played it on the 3DS. Meaning to replay it again, you know, the HD version on the consoles. I played it for a bit. Lovely atmosphere, you know. It's how Resident Evil should be fucking played, you know. You just think of Resident Evil 5, which, you know, isn't that bad. But then you think of Resident Evil 6, which is terrible. And the fact that Capcom also made this, it's like, you know you got talent, you know you can do stuff, so... Yeah. And yeah, I picked up the Wii, View, the Wii U version because, I don't know why. But yeah, Resident Evil Zero really need to get... Well, technically it does have a number at the end, technically. <laughs> so, but yeah, I really need to sit down and play this one as well, because again, I love the, uh, uh, the remake of the original game on the GameCube, and this will be pretty damn good too, so... Yeah, that's that, guys. Uh, quite a big collection update, probably because I haven't done one in a while. Well, big by recent standards, but yeah. That's that. See you after. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.